Hey, medical coding students, this is Janet Thompson, and I thought I would go ahead and do a quick video review of exam four, our very last exam that's coming up sooner than we think it is. So I thought I'd go ahead and get this one out of the way if you wanted to plan ahead. So in our course, in our last module, module four, we are in the very last class session for week 16. And this is where exam four resides, as well as the bonus point opportunity. I'm going to go to the lesson plan, and I just added some files for our last lesson. Now, we do have a guest speaker scheduled for December 5th at 10 a.m. She's going to join us in the online classroom online. It's Julie Embry, and she is certified professional coder with a lot of career experience that she's going to share with us, so that will be great. And this is where the exam for PowerPoint resides. I'm going to download this just to review a few things. Um, this is mostly multiple choice exam, shouldn't be too hard. Um, well, we'll give you a tip when you're doing multiple choice exams, um, when you get your code ranges, look up the codes in the question. It's going to save you a little bit of time from having to look them up through the index and go through that whole process. <clears throat> so that's just a tip. You're going to see some questions on wound repairs from the integumentary system of the surgery section in CPT. You will need to know the difference between a simple, intermediate, and complex repair. The guidelines that define what these are are around or beside code 12001 in your CPT book. Also understand that repair codes are grouped by anatomy and you need to thoroughly review the code description. Like code 12001 is a simple repair on the scalp, neck, axillae, which is the armpit area, genitalia, trunk, and or extremities, arms and legs, the trunk being our middle body, our abdomen and chest. Code 12011 is a repair of wounds of face, ears, eyelids, nose, lips, and mucous membranes. So be sure that you pay close attention to the code description. And these are just uh, some quick tips on repairs. So a simple repair is one layer, um, very easy to administer. Intermediate repairs go by the term layered, so there's more than one layer involved. And complex repairs have more than one layer of closure. Uh, they will can include scar revision, debridement, which is excess cleaning of um, debris, that may be like glass shards that has gotten into the wound, uh, stents or retention sutures. And then I have the uh, definition of debridement. Uh, just another quick hint on intermediate repair. Uh, single layer closure with extensive cleaning is considered intermediate. Um, you're going to probably see a question just about that on the exam. And that is in the guidelines also. Other integumentary system procedures, uh, you'll be coding an incision and drainage, probably of a, a cyst, pylonidal cyst. Uh, debridement, and I've got the code sections listed there where they reside. That's the cleaning of the wound to encourage healing. Uh, repairs and skin tag removals, which those are pretty straightforward and easy to code. And you're just going to need to know just some of the basics of a skin graft procedure and where the codes reside. And that is uh, where a piece of healthy skin moves from one area of the body to another that's damaged or missing for healing, um, and the skin does not have its own source of blood flow, so uh, that's where the graft comes in. And I got the um, uh, website there where I found that definition. Uh, skin flaps, so let's see, we just had skin replacement surgery, flaps and grafts. Uh, flaps versus grafts, the definitions defining the two were there. I won't read all of these off to you, and that's the website where they came from. Uh, destruction of lesions, you'll probably see one question asking you what code for a particular lesion. Destruction methods are different from excision. Um, there's nothing left to excise when that lesion is, is gone through the process. Some key terms for destruction of a lesion include cauterization. Um, that's using heat or electricity to cauterize, stop bleeding. Uh, can be used with extreme heat or cold. Cryosurgery, which is liquid nitrogen or freezing. Curatage, and that's a method of scraping. Electrosurgical, 
Um, this is a specific type of uh, scalpel. An example, electrolysis. Um, that was a beauty procedure once upon a time to remove like facial hair and laser surgery. So these are all methods to completely destroy a lesion. You're going to see some procedures from the digestive system on bariatric surgery. And I've got the two uh, areas that you'll most likely see adjustable gastric band and ruin Y gastric bypass and what code ranges they come from. You're going to see a code question or two from the urinary system. And these are some of the general areas they may come from. Kidney transplantation, urodynamics, and transurethral surgery. So uh, transurethral surgery is very common for a prostate resection for men uh, or prostate removal. Radiology, you're going to see um, in different areas covered in radiology, MRIs and MRAs magnetic resonance imaging and magnetic resonance angiography, ultrasounds, x-rays, 3D radiotherapy, nuclear medicine, SPECT imaging, and salivary gland function studies. And you're going to need to know the difference between technical versus professional components of a radiology code or procedure. So a radiology code as it is will contain a reimbursement for both of those aspects. Unless that radiology code specifically states it's for um, interpretation and report, which is then just covering the professional services. So this is uh, more explanation on the technical component. That modifier is TC when it's added to a radiology code and then modifier 26, which we discussed this in yesterday's lecture how this modifier applies to radiology. So uh, the modifier 26 is the supervision and interpretation, the reporting, the reading of a radiology film, and determining what diagnosis or what is wrong. So the person didn't take the image, they didn't run the equipment, they weren't specialized person that was you know, taking the, the x-ray or, or whatever uh, procedure, they're just reading the results. So knowing the difference between technical and professional components. Some anatomy and abbreviations that you'll see with x-ray views. So the first one, AP, anterior posterior, that means front to back. PA, posterior anterior, means back to front. And I won't read all of those off to you, but you're probably going to see a question pertaining to these specifically. For radiology, you're going to see a question that uses modifier 52. This comes from CPT Appendix A, and this is for reduced services. So how you might see that, an example here, um, we have an exam on an 18-month-old female, and the physician orders an anterior posterior view only of uh, whatever she, she had x-ray of her pelvis. So the code that would be listed is 73540, radiological exam, pelvis and hips infant or child, minimum of two views. So that's what that code specifies. It specifies that there's two views. He's saying here that he only has one view. So he's going to append modifier 52, reduce services. And what that modifier is going to do is bring down the reimbursement rate of that code since it didn't take as much work, essentially. In the medicine section, these are codes for non-invasive procedures. So I did get the medicine PowerPoint review updated. Um, you'll need to know the definition of an infusion, which is administration of medicine through needle or catheter. Uh, psychotherapy services, you'll see some uh, procedures, at least one. The service is based on time. Transesophageal echocardiography, heart catheterization, and electroencephalography. That's of the uh, brain. When we see encephal, that's our medical term for brain. And acupuncture, and those are easy codes. Acupunctures are based on time and use of one or more needles. The last question on the exam is going to be for reviewing claims. And a lecture on this, I have the YouTube link there for you to watch it. It's pretty lengthy. But you're going to get a document with case studies, and you're going to have to look up the codes for them and uh, correctly fill out the service information portion of the claim form. And that's the diagnostic and procedure codes being linked together. 
So there is a specific lecture over that. And I think I do have uh, one exercise I was just going to go through briefly on what you're going to do on this question. And this is a snippet of a patient file, pre-op diagnosis, osteoarthritis of right knee. I went ahead and put the code in there. You're going to be looking these codes up. And I'll show you how this is going to look. Also, procedure was a right total knee replacement, medial and lateral components, and the location was at an ambulatory surgery center. So this is a snippet of what we were doing with this exercise. This is from the CMS 1500 claim form. So the patients in letter A at the very top there, M17.11, that's their diagnosis. Then we get down to box 24. We have the dates of service, which it was listed there December 9th. You'll put your dates in. A place of service is a specific code. These place of service uh, codes are in your CPT book. You can also look them up online. So 24, I believe that, that stands for Ambulatory Surgery Center. The CPT and HCPCS code is listed there. And then there's a pointer that says A. So it's linking that procedure to the osteoarthritis diagnosis, M17.11, and then days or units is one. That's specifically what I'm looking for you to fill out. Um, and you can click in the dark gray portions of the boxes to put these answers in. It'll make it a little bit easier for you. I think in my video, I was putting it in the light gray portion. So um, just stick with the dark gray. And that is the review from the PowerPoint. So getting into the exam, this is the very last question, what it's going to look like. You're going to download this file, and um, you won't be able to print this out. I had to make this a large document size to fit everything on there. So you won't be able to print this out. So if you try it and it, it doesn't work, that's why. Uh, but you're going to have three case studies. So this first one here is a, a Office of Endocrinology. So the procedure was a vitreectomy. And that's procedure of the eye. And then the diagnosis that we see here, type 1 uh, diabetes with proliferative retinopathy. And you're going to fill out in this box, you're going to click in here and put the uh, code information in. So uh, I have highlighted everything you're going to be looking for. Let's look at the second one. A uh, 70 year old patient of mine for the past 20 years. So this is an office visit. Uh, medical record indicates problem focused history and exam and straightforward medical decision making. And we see the diagnosis here. So you're going to fill out again um, these box areas linking the codes together. And then the last case study is a colonoscopy. And this person's diagnosis is going to be history of inflammatory bowel disease. So I will not uh, go into much further detail than that, but I will say um, there is a review video on this exercise available in Collaborate currently. And there is going to be an extra credit for exam four. I've got another article in there that's going to apply just to exam four. And that is it. So I uh, hope you guys have a good Thanksgiving. The group discussion three, the last group discussion board is coming up due next week. I want us to go ahead and get that done by next Wednesday, or this coming Wednesday, November 27th. And please also remember to make your replies to your group members. And have a great week and holiday. In the meantime, if you have any questions, feel free to email me.